Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you the science behind the ruler trick. So I have a regular ruler here. I'm just gonna lay it off the edge of the table and it's gonna barely balance. Watch what happens when I drop this ball in here. It falls off, so nothing surprising happens. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, except I'm gonna lay a piece of paper over it. Now watch what happens. You can see it stays on there and it doesn't fall off. I can even hit it pretty hard. And it doesn't come off. It is literally stuck onto the table. But watch what happens when I take the paper off again. And it falls right off. So how is it doing this? Well first let's just check to make sure it's not the weight of the paper that's keeping it down. So I'm going to crumple this and put it on top of here and let's do the same thing. I'm going to drop it and it flies right off. So obviously it's not the weight of the paper that's keeping it down. In fact, I can probably even put a significant amount of weight on there. And even the roll of tape couldn't hold it down. So if it's not the weight of the paper, how does setting a paper on the ruler keep the ruler on the table? Well, it makes a little more sense when I use this stack of papers here. So I have about five pages here and some duct tape and I'm gonna try to pick it up using the duct tape. You can see that I can't. It remains stuck to the other pages. Well, let's try it on one paper then and just leave it on the table and try it again. Still, it does not, uh, does not pick up with the duct tape. But if I do it slowly, it rises up and I can pick it up. So why is it doing this? Now let's try the same thing with this perforated strainer here. So this is just stainless steel with many holes in it. And I'm gonna put the paper on here and get our piece of duct tape, try to pick it up. Easily comes off. So now let's try our same experiment again, but on this perforated strainer here. So I'm gonna do it without the paper first. And as expected, it flies right off. But now I'm gonna add the paper on here and let's see what happens. Still flies off. So in this case, it still flew off with the paper on it, but it was a little slower because the, as it was coming off, the paper had a little air resistance to it, so it slows it down. So we know that when we try to remove the paper fast from the table, it wants to stick to it. And also we know that if we put some perforations uh, under or some little holes that allow airflow, it also comes off the table easily. So this helps us understand that it's the air pressure that's playing a role in this. So you were, when you lay a piece of paper like this on the table, there's barely air, any air underneath it. But when you try to pick it up from the center like this, you're increasing the volume of space underneath. You're trying to pick it up. But because there's no good air channels around the edges, you can't suck in any air to increase that volume. And so it, what it does is that it lowers the pressure. You're increasing the volume without increasing the amount of air inside, and so the pressure decreases. So that means that the pressure is lower underneath the paper, so the atmospheric pressure presses down on it and holds it in place. So basically what you're doing is you're creating a paper suction cup. But because it's paper, it doesn't hold the vacuum very long, and if you just do it slowly, like this, you can pick it up just fine because it gives us enough air, uh, time for the air to flow in. But if you do it fast, there's not enough time for the air to flow in so that it can't get in there fast enough to increase the pressure. So the atmospheric pressure holds it in place. The ruler trick and suction cups essentially use the same physics. The only difference is that the silicone and suction cups do not allow the air to flow in and it is able to keep a strong vacuum. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe or hit the bell to be notified when I release my latest video. I'll see you next time.